Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin. Welcome to my online lectures for ITSC 2321 Object Oriented Programming using Java. This series of online lectures will approximate the lectures that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will consist of many hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture will be broken down into segments of approximately 15 minutes each to satisfy the YouTube length limitations. This is the beginning of part one of lecture eight. I invite you to visit my college website at the address that I am highlighting now. That is where you will find the syllabus for this course along with other online information regarding this course. I also invite you to visit my personal website at the address that I'm highlighting now. When you visit that site, you will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, digital signal processing, and other computer related topics. Students who are enrolled in this course are expected to study my tutorial lessons numbered 1600 through 1630 at the address that I am highlighting now. Those students are also expected to study the material in the course textbook. So without further delay, let's enter the world of object-oriented programming. This is lecture number eight, titled Green Screen Processing. In this lesson, you will learn to how to write a program to do green screen processing, which is also known as color key or chroma key processing. In particular, you will learn how to write a program to superimpose a source image onto a destin destination image while making the green background of the source image appear to be transparent. The brief program specifications are to use the code that you see on the right of the screen along with Barb Erickson's media library and four input image files to produce five graphic output images. The four input images that we, that we will use in this program are this one, this one, this one, and finally, this one. The primary graphic output image is shown here. In addition to the graphic output images, the program requires the student to produce some typical text on the command line screen. The student is allowed to define new classes as necessary to cause the program to behave as required, but the student is not allowed to modify the class definition for the class name Prob03 currently showing on the right on your screen. In terms of general background information, this program receives three views of an ice skater 
in image files of type BMP with a pure green background. In addition, the program receives an image file of type JPG that contains a snow scene. All four of the input image files contain some extraneous material that I am pointing to now. One of the program requirements is to crop the input images in such a way as to remove this extraneous material. The program performs several actions. One action is to crop the snow scene so as to remove the extraneous material along the top of the original snow scene image file. In addition, the program crops the three views of the ice skater to remove the extraneous material along the top and also to remove excess blank green background. The program scales two of the views of the ice skater to smaller sizes as shown here and here. The program does green screen processing to place the three views of the skater at different locations in the snow scene as shown here, here, and here. Note that the green background for each view of the ice skater was made transparent so that that green background does not show up here, here, and here. Finally, the program uses position along with size to create an optical illusion of a 3D scene of three ice skaters and a penguin standing, standing at different locations on a frozen lake. As usual, I will explain this program by breaking the code into smaller fragments and explaining the fragments. The driver class containing the main method is now showing on the right of your screen. The main method instantiates a new object of the class name prob03runner and saves that object's reference in the reference variable named obj. Then the main method uses the reference to call the run method that belongs to the object. When the run method returns, the program terminates. The beginning of the class named prob03runner, including its constructor, is now showing on the right of your screen. The constructor displays the student's name on the command line screen, producing one line of output text that you saw earlier. The beginning of the method named run is now showing on the right of your screen. The code on the right of your screen contains four very similar sections. One, two, three, and four. Each of the four sections of code instantiates a new picture object 
using an image file as input. Then it calls the explorer method on the new picture object to display the uh, picture in a picture explorer object and then it calls a method named crop to crop off excess material as I described earlier. For example, the image on the right of your screen now shows a cropped version of one of the ice skater images. So here's a question for you. Given the fact that JPG files are much smaller than BMP files, why do you think that I wasted disk space by using BMP files instead of JPG files for each of the three ice skater images? The process that we are going to use to cause the green background on the ice skater images to appear to be transparent requires that every pixel in that background be pure green. Storing the ice skater images as JPG files instead of BMP files would have corrupted the background color in the low order bits causing some pixels to be a color other than pure green. This would have required me to go to an extra effort to achieve the green screen processing that is required by this program. If I had saved the ice skater images as JPG files with corrupted green backgrounds, I would have been required to use a different approach to accomplish the green screen processing and quite likely could not have done as good a job.